Hi everyone, this is Professor Widener. Uh, welcome to week number three. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about finding relevant research related to answering your practice problem or clinical question. The thing that is going to guide this research is PICO-T question. Your PICO-T question is actually going to give you what you need to search for the information. Uh, this is going to give you the keywords that you're going to search within the databases and the PICO templates will help you create a well-structured question. We're going to continue working on our questions that we started in week number two, perfecting them and getting them ready so you have uh, a good working set of uh, keywords to start with. Just briefly, there's a couple types of PICO questions, and we talked about those last week. Um, the intervention, the prognosis and the prediction, the diagnostic testing, the etiology, and the meaning. And if you have any questions on those, you can look back to last week's slide. So when we talk about sources of external evidence, um, there are a couple different things that you can use. There are textbooks that can be used to address background questions. There are individual journals which can be used again to um, address questions. Um, bibliography or electronic databases may give you information as well. Uh, pre sources, this is what we would use like as the Cochrane database of systemic review of uh, reviews. Or you could also can, uh, use like websites from a hospital, like the Mayo Clinic may give you information about um, that you would use as well. There are guidelines and standards to address the questions, and you can find those um, by doing literature searches, but you could also do them by working whatever like kind of professional group you're Researching. So if you're doing a question about COPD, you might go to the Pulmonary Association's website to look for the specific guidelines or standards in treating COPD patients. And when you looked, you'd find that there are the gold standards, the G-O-L-D standards as to how to address COPD. You can use Google Scholar, but again, I would use it with caution. We want to um, remember that we need to use uh, peer-reviewed resources, and we're going to go through all these in a little bit more of uh, detail. The other thing that I think is important when you're deciding on the um, type of resources you're going to use, remember you are either in a master's or a doctoral program that we want to make sure they're within the last five years unless they are uh, a standard of care or they're like a gold standard article. Um, the other thing is is that we want to make sure it's evidence that we can definitely use and back up because that would be like a scholarly type of information that you found. We want to avoid things like um, WebMD or Wikipedia and the students will say why can't I use those and I want you to think that if you had this question let's say you're a practicing NP and you're in the office and you have a question on how to treat somebody with something would you if it were your family member would you want that provider to be going to WebMD to figure out how to treat that condition and I'm 99% sure that the answer would be no so always think about how you'd want somebody caring for your family to obtain information to treat a condition they didn't know 100% about. So I think that that's a good example of a way to uh, phrase that. So when we look at the biographical database, these are electronic and uh, you can uh, access these through the um, Misericordia website, but there's Medline, uh, PubMed, there's CINAHL, uh, Psych Info, Educational Resources Information Center, abbreviated ERIC, and Embase. And I think looking at the uh, library resources will also help with these. And remember to look 
your APA manual when you're citing these because most times now full links to the text are in the uh, are in the actual references. So databases using pre finding pre-approved or appraised evidence. This so this is going to be where you're going to find reviews. And what this means is somebody's already determined that this is good and valid information that can be used. So you might want to check the Cro the Cochrane database. Um, BMJ is the British Medical Journal. Ab abstracts and reviews of effects, or a peer, the Physician Information and Education Resources. There's also um, the American College of Physicians Journal Club, again, where you can just find some more. So this just gives you a little bit about um, when you search licensed databases or when you do web search engines. And basically the bottom line is, is that there is a combination probably gives you the best results. But licensed databases such as PubMed allows you to know which journals that they are searching. So again, you know that they're peer reviewed, you know that they're um, of quality background and giving quality information. Internet searches, such as if you lose Google or Google Scholar, there does not have to be as much transparency in what is being included in the search. The other thing is, is that internet searches may include gray literature, which is um, unpublished drug trials, reports, or conference proceedings. And sometimes when something is very new, we use those, but our problems are not gonna be that new. So there's no peer reviewed evidence. And so you have to kind of take that information with a grain of salt. It may be reliable, but it may not. Um, so at this point in your careers, you're not gonna use peer reviewed evidence. But again, if you think about over the last year with the situation related to COVID, there was many times we were using gray literature to develop protocols because it was such a new a new problem. And as I said earlier, combining the two may yield the best search results. The other thing I want to alert you to is that if you find a really good article that is related to your PICO T question, look in the references for the, of that article because those references may take you to other resources that you use as for your, for your um, PICO T question. So which of the following examples is an external database? That is an example of a biographical database. And we know that's going to be CINAHL. Uh, the other ones are uh, pre-appraised literature. Some of the common search strategies include using words generated from each component of the PICO question. All appropriate keywords, you can include terms, synonyms, phrases, phrases uh, brand names, anything that might lead you to that. The major strengths are that this provides a quick snapshot of how helpful a database may be in finding relevant data to your question but on the other hand, if you may miss studies that don't exactly match the author's keywords, that you may find things that are not relevant to your PICO T question. But this is probably one of the easiest strategies to start with. Another strategy you could use is subject heading searching, which uses a set of pre-selected terms for the search. Um, so that's commonly referred to controlled vocabulary. That means that they pick out similar words in the descriptors and the taxonomies for you. The strength of this search is that it can be broadened without considering every synonym for the chosen keyword. And studies selected only if at least 25% of those topics thus will be relevant. So it decreases the number of studies that you'll get. As a major weakness, this is a new technology and it might not be 100% uh, accurate yet in helping you get the information that you need, but it will sharpen 
the information that you get. Title searching uses the keywords generated from the P, I, and the O of your PICO question. Uh, with the use of these search phrases, all phrases, synonyms, acronyms, phrases, and brands may be used. Again, this is the strength is, is that you will find articles related to your PICO T, but and it's highly effective in finding articles, but one of those weaknesses is, is that you may miss other studies that don't that are not contained that do not contain the keywords. So again, one of the strategies I really like is if you find a good article, look in the reference. And the other thing is, is that when you're looking for a guideline, go to organs, organizations to look for the guidelines. And then they may even have references in the guidelines that will help you kind of stream into where you need to look for more information. Question number three, is the following statement searching known as the controlled vocabulary searches may yield fewer hits than a keyword search but these hits are more likely to be relevant to the clinical question and that's true because that is the point of using a controlled vocabulary search you may not get as many results but they'll be more relevant to your project sometimes we're going to combine different types of searches to um, to help us find information. And uh, so you may put a couple different kinds of keywords in from your PICO T question. You may use um, running single digit search that allow a number of hits. So since back to our CO topic, you may put PD over 75 or COPD and medication, words that build on the other uh, that combine two different topics. So then what would happen when you search that way, both terms need to be present in the article to be included in the results. When you use the word or to search for different things, that means one or the other term will be in the results and you generally get more research articles to review. This is really, um, I don't want you to get frustrated with searching for literature. This takes a long time. Um, and you may look through, you know, 20 articles and not find one that is like, just hits your question or your topic right on. But just be patient with the process. And no, you may have a topic that you're interested in, but it may lead you to a different kind of question as you read more, um, as you meet, read more research studies, and I'll be honest, that happened to me in my uh, in my studies. I started out interested in um, rural health and didn't really know how I would take that into a research topic. And then, as I looked at uh, things that affect rural health, like social determinants of health and uh, different problems, there's a discrepancy between how patients in urban areas are treated as opposed to the way patients in more rural areas are treated and uh, why does that happen? And it actually has taken me down a road to say, we know that diabetes is treated significantly different in the rural area. And one of the things that they focus on is better education of the providers. And my question is, is that, is it really education of the providers? because they're not following the guidelines or are there other reasons? My hypothesis is, is that there are other reasons they're not following the guidelines, such as patient compliance or ability to afford medications. But I didn't really think my road would take me there, but that's kind of where my research has taken me. So you're gonna look at a lot of articles, but just be patient and you'll get to where you need to be. That's why um, I decided to move the assignment to February uh, February 28th, so you had more time to look at more articles and we can get those questions right where they should be. So along with using limits when searching, um, you could use the limit, like let's say if you search diabetes and you've got, you know, 856,000 articles. Well, you might want to 
you might want to, you're obviously not going to read that many, so you want to pare them down. One of the limits I would use is studies within the last five years. Um, you may want to, you may want to check off that they're peer reviewed articles because are uh, uh, for this project, your articles need to peer reviewed and sometimes that'll pare it down enough that um, that will get you to where you need to be. And the other thing is, is that remember, um, when setting limits, be thoughtful, because when you limit the search to something like full text only, that eliminates all the publications that the database does not subscribe to in full text. That a good article, they just don't do it. So you could obtain it from the library, or maybe you can find it on another search engine. So just keep in mind to use your uh, limits and filters sparingly, but use smart ones when you do it. The other thing is, is that there is reference management software systems out there, and these allow us to save our searches. Um, there are some free ones called uh, RefWorks or EndNote. Um, there are also some other ones listed there. That is obviously something to consider as you go forward as a way to help you organize your searches and remember what search terms you used. I am going to post a uh, a reference sheet to help you put that up there and we're going to build this set of information and looking for articles so I'll uh, keep on the lookout for that but we are going to organize uh, all your articles in one spot and your search engines to again create a list of information that you can take with you over to the, your capstone projects just some final tips on an effective search remember you want to, it all starts with the Pico T. And having a good one is one of the important things to making your successful. Remember to use subject headings when available and search multiple different databases because each database will have unique journals that you may not have found uh, before. Remember to use uh, limits or filters if you're uh, if you have too much information or the or and and words to get things more relevant to you. And you also want to establish inclusion and exclusion criteria before searching, so th that the study that answer the question are easily more identifiable. Apply and apply these criteria to the search strategy every time, so you keep that uh, system going. I hope this gives you a little bit more information. Uh, Laura Rock, our embedded librarian, has posted a ton of information uh, regarding the literature searches as well. And uh, I wish you happy searching. And uh, have a great day.